Hey, you're listening to the Burnt Out Entrepreneur Podcast, where you'll learn why you're feeling so burnt out, some insights and hacks to get you along this entrepreneurial journey. I'm Kylie Yota, former oil and gas manager, turned health coach, life coach, and business mentor for female entrepreneurs just like you and help them heal and recover from burnout. Hello, and welcome to another podcast episode of The Burnt Out Entrepreneur. Today, I am talking with one of my favorite business coaches, Amy Yamada, and oh my gosh, like she is the queen of authentic messaging. I'm so happy you're here today, Amy. So we're going to be talking about, Amy's a seven-figure entrepreneur, and right, she's my business coach, of course. I look up to her, and she put out its post that was talking about how to live burnout-free, and I was like, yes, this is the vibe that I need to have on the podcast. And I just want you to see that having seven figures doesn't mean you have to kill yourself to get it. So without further ado, welcome, Amy, to the podcast. Uh, thank you so much, Kylie. I, I love this topic, um, especially because I, I certainly have burnt myself out in the past multiple times. And anytime I, I have and just felt that energy of depletion. I always remind myself, this is not what I'm meant to do, right? And so it's just always about finding another way. And um, yeah, I know we had the chance to chat a little bit before this, uh, this podcast, and it, it really is about finding the path that works for you. So I'm, I'm excited to get into it today. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were chatting earlier, I, I kind of wanted this to be like a day in the life of a seven-figure entrepreneur who is living burnout free. She's running a seven figure business without burnout. So um, just tell us like how, how you started your business, like how it all began and how, cause I know like we've worked together for a while. So I know like how you structure your days. And so anyway, I'm not going to give it yeah. away. Tell us how you, you do all of this, but without burning yourself out. Yeah, well, it's it certainly looks very different now than it did the first few years that I was in business. I mean, I, I've had my business for um, almost 12 years now. And when I think back to like the first few years, there was a lot that I was figuring out on my own, right? As this kind of solo entrepreneur. And um, I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew what I wanted to go into coaching, but you know, I just wasn't sure exactly what it would look like. And so I was just experimenting and trying all these different things. And um, you know, didn't have like savings <laughs> to like land on, you know, so I had to figure out how to get things up and running while also earning an income. And so, um, so if I go way back, it, it was definitely a, a bumpy start for the first few years. And, um, I think people don't always talk about that, right. People always see like where you are now or whatever, but like right. the first few years was, you know, <laughs> I, I'll use all of it. Like I was experimenting. It was a hot mess, you know, like, <laughs> I was, I was very broad and vague with my messaging, even with a marketing background. And, um, and it, I continue to refine it today, you know, like it's evolved and it even evolved at the beginning of this year, but, but over time, it was just about really figuring out, okay, what is in alignment with me? You know, what is, uh, what is, what strategy is going to work, but really on a much deeper level, just being really true to myself, like clear with who I am and what is my vision and who is my ideal client? Who do I really want to serve and really deeply understand them and know that they are um, an audience that wants what I have to offer, right? So there's just a lot of inquiry initially that we go through. And um, and also I used to just let my schedule be everybody else's schedule. Like, oh, you want to book a time with me? What works for you, right? Like, let me just be the ultimate people pleaser. And, oh, you want to talk in the evening? Sure, or a different time zone and it doesn't work for me, but I'll just make, right? Like there was just right. a lot of like giving my life away <laughs> to people to just book time. And at some point I was like, yeah. this is not working for me. And, um, and I, every, you know, I, I'm often tweaking what I make myself available for. And it's definitely, you know, I, there's things that I just don't, I choose to not have space for anymore. And yeah, because I care about myself now. So it's just right. Oh my gosh. That people pleaser <laughs> dies hard. Doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> and she still some, sometimes shows up like, cause it, she, she's coming from a good place. She's like, I just want to give, you know? And it's like, you can still be a giving person and make sure you're taking care of yourself. And I, I continue, it's a, it's a lesson I'm sure I'll continue to learn throughout my life, but it's better now than it's ever been. So um, I'm grateful for that for sure. Yeah. I know yeah. for me, 
recently I lost my best friend and before we hopped on and started recording, you know, like you've lost someone as well. And for me, that was such a, a shift in perspective. Like we only have these amount of days and who knows when like, er, you thought you had this much and you don't have as much as you thought like how can we make every day count and if we're sitting here grinding it out and hating our life hating our business yeah. what, what kind of life is that and there's uh, that's what I really want the audience to hear from your story is how you've managed to build a business now that you love, but still brings in money. Cause there's this misconception about like, I got to work hard in order to make this amount of money. Yeah. And, you know, especially with the like Gary V hustle and Alex Hermosi, like all of them hustle, <laughs> you know, the, yeah. there's a time and a place for it for sure. And, right. you know, because, I know people on your team and, you know, that they, I work with them on other teams and I understand that like how you run your business is very, like you guys get in, get out, you guys get the job done, but without stressing out your team, without stressing oh, yeah. yourselves out. And, but it, it's very structured. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. Like I have my flowy entrepreneurs too, right? They're like, but I want to be in flow and I just want life to be easy. <laughs> but anyway, just expand more on that. Like how you do it. Totally. totally, Yeah. And, and, uh, and once again, my, my heart goes out to you with what you, what you shared also, you know, about loss and I, you know, right. And, and we we're just talking about how, like I lost my mom back in 2010 and that similar to what you said, it just was such an eye opener in terms of how precious this life is and that we don't know, you know, how many days we have on this planet, at least in this life experience, whatever your belief system is, right? Right. Um, and um, it, to me, it's just about really recognizing that first and foremost, you know, I, I just, um, I actually just heard a few days ago that uh, a, it's a, it's kind of like a very distant relative, right? But like, there's a whole, like there's a very distant relative. I didn't know this person that passed away um, just this past weekend who was 23 years old. And I, I didn't know this person, but I just heard through kind of the grapevine through my family what happened and he had a heart issue. And I just thought, oh my gosh, 23, you know? And, and and it to me, it's like whatever whatever experiences we've had with loss or hearing about people losing a loved one, it to me is always a reminder that every single day is a gift. And, and I know that doesn't mean that every single day is, you know, unicorns and rainbows and everything's perfect. You know, I'm a positive person, but you know, there are hard days. Um, but I do my best to just remember that at some point in my life, all I'll wish for is another day, right? Like at some point in my life, I'm like, oh, I just had one more day, right? Like, what would I do with that day? And I get chills even thinking about that. Yeah. And so it has me want to just wrap my arms around people I love and make sure that I'm being true to who I am and, and like being, you know, my best self and just, you know, like just really, really appreciating this daily life that I'm in and not saying, oh, I'll be happy when this happens or, oh, I'm so stressed out. And, you know, so, so part of it I, on a, just on a deeper level, is just taking a moment and really being in gratitude, not just in a fluffy way, but just like what are you truly grateful for in your life? And what might we be taking for granted right now that someday we might not have, right? Yeah. And so when I hear about a you know, very distant relative passing at 23, I think about his parents and what they're experiencing right now and his siblings and mm -hmm. like heart, you know, it's just like, what if that was, you know, one of my immediate family members? And so anyway, to, you know, on a much lighter note, um, I just think about like, what, you know, what is it that you really want? And what is, are, have you, have you connected in with that vision? Or maybe you had a vision and, and it didn't happen right away. So you kind of got stuck in the routine. Like I'll just speak for myself. There are times when I've just gotten stuck on my hamster wheel, you know, where I'm like <laughs> kind of checking off a to-do list every day and attending things, right. Or hosting things. It's like, okay, am I like, alive you know like am I really bringing my spark to what it is I'm doing 
or have I got, let, let it get a bit complacent, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think it's important just first of all, just to really have gratitude each day yeah. and to be clear about what it is that you want and stay connected with that vision and connected with that deep why. And just ask yourself, how important is this to me? How committed am I? You know, how am I going to show up today to, to lean towards that vision? Yeah. And I love the question that you sent out in a recent email saying like, did these activities energize me or deplete me? Like when you're looking at your schedule, ain't nobody got time for that. Literally what we just oh. talked about, ain't nobody got time yeah. for that. It's interesting. Like um, I always have a notebook in front of me. So one of the things I like to do is, um, is to do like draw like two columns, right? And then you can, you can uh, make a list of drainers right? So the left side, say, what are the things that drain me? And then drivers. And so every once in a while, when I'm feeling a little bit like, uh oh, am I like leaning into burnout land a little bit? I will do this exercise again, because there might be things that I haven't thought about before. And I'll, and I've taken clients to this, right? Like, I'm just like, let's all just do this right now. And we'll make a list of the drainers. And then we'll think like, what lights me up? And it's like, what do we want to spend more of our time on the drive? Things that really light our soul and fire, like just really excite us. Yes. And then with these drainers, there could be a story of like, yeah, but I have to, yeah, but I, okay. Is there a better way? What if there are a better way? You know, what if you could delegate this to someone or create yeah. a, a system around it? I used to not get how sexy systems are. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, in the first few years, like, you're just like, I just want to attract clients, right? I just want to start generating $10,000 a month, right? Like, let's, let's usually like initial goal. I, sh I just want to do this, right? So when a more advanced uh, entrepreneur would say, yeah, but you need systems. I'm like, system, like sounds so boring, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, what is this, a machine? And I'm like, now I'm like, yes, it is a machine. <laughs> so yeah. now I love systems and I'm grateful that I have team members that really get systems and I've gotten into it myself. I'm like, why not optimize, systematize, you know, leverage, like, so that you're not hustling yourself into the ground and burning yourself out. Yeah. And really think about what are my drainers? What are my drivers? What can I either delegate or systematize or just decide this is actually not a priority right now and put it on the freaking back burner or throw it away. Right. So it's just keep it, keep it simple. Really. Really. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love that you said that. And for the audience, I want to point out Amy's archetype is the popular archetype, right? So <laughs> she's the fun loving person because I can hear some of you saying like, oh, I don't have time for that. Yeah. But like you really don't not have time for that because if you're trying to maximize your time. So here's, here's where I want to go with the popular archetypes. You want to have fun in your business, right? Oh, yes. So, the less time you spend in the weeds, that's the more time you have for play. Systems help you to get out of the weeds, right? So it's a necessary evil and it's something that you can do. And the, with systems, the more you do it in the beginning to create the system, I get it. It's heavy. It's clunky. Trying to figure out how everything works. But once you get a system down and especially a system that works for you, right? Yeah. Especially if you take the archetype quiz, I'll give you tips on how to create a life and a business that works for your archetype because yeah. we're all different people, you know, and like one size does not fit all for business structure. We, I, we, raise your hand if you bought all the things right I bought all the things so true <laughs> you get into the thing you're like why does this feel so hard it feels like it's crushing my soul and you see people taking off and making all the money then when it you look at yourself like why am I not I'm not making money it's like because you're not driving with their system perhaps you know and that system doesn't work for you it works for them that's how that's why they created it but it may not work for your personality or your lifestyle. So, you know, that's, an, that's another, you know, point of burnout that I like to talk to my clients about, like, what are you investing your time, money, and energy in? And does it really fit your life? Does it fit how you work and how you want to work? And we, I could go down the rabbit hole with that, but she's a fun archetype, okay, people? And she's found the, the necessity and the love for systems. And, um, and honestly, though, I'm also 
that popular archetype, I like to have fun. And I realized that because I know Amy, you and I met and you've referred clients to me like as a project manager and things. And so I can get down with some systems, right? Mm -hmm. But I realized why I love systems so much is because it gives me the free time. If I can systemize things, if I can create a project plan that works around my lifestyle, works around my team's lifestyle, Right. If let's say the copywriter is going to be on vacation in France for the next two weeks, of course, we're not going to launch anything or we're going to have her pre-write all the content ahead of time so that she can be free. She can be go live her life, be happy because right, a happy team makes a happy business. Are you? Oh, gosh, I would love to talk about team attrition. I don't know if we have time for that on this call, but like team attrition, like I've been on teams where the turnover is so like it's like a revolving door because the business owner gets caught up in just like going, 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 pushing, pushing that hustle mentality. And it's it's your business. So I get it. You're passionate about it but your team may not be that passionate about building a funnel, staying up till midnight, trying to crank this puppy out. And you have, you have something like a masterclass tomorrow and you need to get this funnel, like um, landing page, whatever, like, eh. you know, yeah. it's, I yeah. love this topic, Kylie, because I, I, uh, I've heard from even colleagues of mine, like in masterminds that I've been in where they're just like, like, oh my gosh, how do you get your team to stay with you? I'm like, I, I didn't know this was an issue, by the way. I really didn't. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, oh, well, I, I've gone through like four virtual assistants in the last year. I'm like, and so my question to them is, how are you treating your people? <laughs> you know, and and um, because at the end of the day, I, I this is what I found when it comes to team. First of all, if there's an area of your business that's feeling very heavy, it's likely that it's time to hire a team member that is better than you in that area of your business. Right. Like the only thing that I would say, don't outsource until you know how to do it yourself is your messaging and your enrollments. Like if you can't sell what you offer, don't hire it out until you're able to sell what you offer because articulation and messaging and being able to articulate the value is super important. But, but say that some of the administrative tasks are feeling heavy or, um, you know, if it's, if it has to do with accounts receivables and credit cards and contracts, like just think about like, what, what do you wish you could delegate right now? If you could take something off your plate and then find someone who's better than you at this task, even if you hire them for five hours a week. And even if there's a thought like, yeah, but it's just five hours, I could just do it and save that money. I'm telling you that those five hours are not only the time that you're saving, but you're also saving mental space that that's handled and you don't have to think about it. And what can you do with that freedom of space in your, in your head? Um, but I've had, my team members have been with me for a long time and, um, I just look at them as extended family and we work together. We work, we work through things together. And uh, probably the two pieces of advice that were the best advice I've ever received when it comes to hiring team are to number one, find someone who will take ownership of their role, not someone that you're going to babysit and micromanage all that. Like you're trying to take this off of your plate. And if you take it off your plate and then micro, like you're over their shoulder every second of the day, then you're not, you're not really delegating. And then the second thing, which I believe is the most important thing is to find someone who's on a mission with you. They believe in the work that you and your company are doing. So they, they take pride in, in what it is that they do that relates to the other one as well. So, um, that's what I did over time is that I just found the right fit people to be alongside me. And we, we all are different. I'm sure we're all different archetypes, you know, <laughs> yeah. but that's, that's what's beautiful about it is that. I have team members that love being in the weeds, that love being in like creating the systems and the um, the SOPs, right? Standard operating procedures and and the tech, you know, behind the scenes tech. And it's not that I couldn't do it. I used to do it all on my own and learn and implement and do, but it's not my passion. So I like to stay in my passion of speaking and being the visionary of my company, coaching, mentorship, um, working on collaborations than, than I do, you know, being in, in the weeds of it all. So um, yeah. Yeah. for team, find the people that align with you. And I would say, love, love them up, you know, <laughs> like, like treat them the way you want to be treated and, um, you'll be set. Yeah. Well, speaking of love, you have a new team member since the last time we worked together. 
I was like, where is she going with this? I'm like, oh, I know where she's going with this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can speak on that. And because where sometimes your best team member might be right under your nose. This is true. <laughs> this is very true. So just talking about the love of my life, Ken. Um, yeah, so he needed to make a pivot like many of us have, you know, like we I think we all made some form of a pivot come the pandemic and he owned a gym, a, a local gym here. I live in Seattle. It was in the greater Seattle area. And I mean, it was just, it was just not good. You know, I mean, we couldn't Everything. give our members access. There's a, I won't go to the whole long story, yeah. um, but you know, we decided to close doors. And, um, and so we started really thinking about like, what does that next chapter look like for him? And, and he just started to really, I mean, he's always taken an interest in, in my business and what I'm up to. And, um, but fast forward to today and we work together now and sometimes people are like, what is that like? You know, I'm like, it's actually really great. Except sometimes I'm like, let's talk about something other than business. <laughs> you know, Cause we, right. we, we have so much fun. We geek out on it. We have a great time. Um, but, uh, but it's been really, really cool to see like what my strengths are and what his strengths are. And then coming into this year with AI and his, just his, the way that his brain works and the way that he understands it and the way that he, so he was initially like teaching me on like early on with chat GPT specifically. It's like, check this out, look at this. I'm like, what is this thing? You know, cause I was in my own world. And, um, mm -hmm. and so then we, we got into it together and it's been a really, um, a really exciting year of still like focusing on like what's true for me and how I, how I coach my clients. You know, I have my, I have my mastermind, I've got some programs, but it's like the through line has always been authenticity, right? Authentic messaging, authentic marketing, showing, showing up as your authentic self, building a business that's fully aligned with you versus you have to do it this way. I hate it when business coaches like you must do this, or you have to have this. I'm like, I have not done it that way. And I didn't do that. I don't have that asset that you're talking about. I still have been able to grow a successful business. So I'm not buying what you're selling, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, with 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 ChatGPT and and AI, like it just it's been a really fun year to bring that into what we're doing. And he and I have have uh, collaborated on that, and it's been really fun to, you know, work with the love of my life and continue to build this business together. So, yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about that because I think that's on everyone's mind. Like, how do we bring ChatGPT? And like, it, it, it feels very, like it's that logical plus that creative brain, right? You'll have the creatives that are like, oh, but it has to, and flow and be like th that. And then the logical side is like systems and whatever. I love what you guys have done. Like you used Ken's strength mm -hmm. and your strength and yeah. you, you guys made this baby. <laughs> anyway, talk about your baby that you made. <laughs> Yes. I don't think I've ever been asked the question quite in that way. And I love it. <laughs> um, so what we created is what we call the heart speech model. And and then we have another development. I'll, this, we're, I'll share a little bit about that as well. That's soon to be launched, very soon to be launched. Um, so what we, what we did, what we discovered is that there's, okay, so we've got AI over here and then humanity over here, right? It's like opposite ends of the spectrum. So we're like, how do we bridge this, this spectrum? How do we bridge these two together? And it's, it truly is authenticity, right? So then the question is, how do I bring my authentic voice into AI? How do I have it understand me, my voice, my authenticity, my gifts, my core values, how I like to communicate? Um, and then what we've, what we've evolved it into is how can it deeply understand my authentic ideal client, right? Yeah. And so by doing this, we've, um, we created the heart speech model in order to train ChatGPT and now Claude, we've been loving using Claude. Um, but either one of them, like training it on my authentic voice. So we've been, and we've been coaching other people now on how to do this yeah. is so that when you use chat GPT or Claude or other platforms, you actually have it understand your unique voice and writing style. So that way you have this analysis and then you can feed it back into chat GPT or another platform to write in your voice. And then we also do something called the heart speech, which is where you do a voice transcription. So I'll just use like the notes section on my phone or otter, you know, like the O T T E R it's a, an app. You probably are familiar where you can, uh, audio trans both audio record and transcribe your voice. So when you just speak freely without thinking, Oh, this is a marketing message. You can say like, okay, I really want to speak into, you know, mindset. Here's what I really want to say about mindset and just like flow with it. So for those who want to be in flow, just like flow with it, say whatever you want to say without editing anything. 
And then you'll have this like chunk of, of uh, your, your transcription and then you can copy and paste that into AI and then use that once you prompt it. So it's really pulling from you your authentic voice and your authentic writing style and then give it a prompt to write something for you. It's it's so much better than just a boring generic prompt that gives right. you one generic scripty, salesy sounding, whatever it is you're having for emails, social media posts, um, blogs, what have you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's just been a whole thing. We've had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And yeah. to be clear, because I've been in your program, like yeah. the stuff that the, the human side of it hasn't changed much. Like that's what you taught us, like do the the heart speech. And but now you're just taking what you've already done and you just added this AI component to it just to yeah. make our lives so much easier. Burnout free. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And can I just, can I tell you the, the latest, like the thing I'm most excited about now that, um, we're, we're, we, we're already teaching it to our current clients inside our authentic marketing with AI program. And then we're going to have an automation on this very soon. But my point is we've discovered a way to work with AI to create a deep dive. We're calling it your ideal client handbook. Right. Wow. So oftentimes in marketing and messaging, we always ask like, oh, who do you serve and what problem right. do you solve? Right. Those right. are like two very popular questions, which are good. I've asked them myself, but let's go way deeper and really discover who is my ideal client. What are, what are, what are the psychographics? What, you know, what are the thoughts that they're having? Whenever somebody says, oh, what keeps them up at night? I mean, we might have an idea, but yeah. this in-depth ideal client handbook actually gives you those thoughts, gives you their fears and frustrations in their voice. It even gives you what they would say to their therapist, right? Like it, it gives you wow. all this information. It gives you their personality types. It, it just breaks down everything. It even gives you a sample testimonial of if your ideal client did your program, not because we want to use a fake testimonial, but if we have a sample testimonial from our authentic ideal client, that can become our North star about how yes. we continue to refine what it is that we offer them programs, products, services, and what have you. Right. So yeah. it's, not a, it becomes like a, 12 to 14 page document that you can then feed back into AI. So not only does it understand wow. your voice, but it understands your ideal client's voice. And we, we just had a, um, a workshop on this earlier today. And this woman asked us when I was showing her an example of my ideal client handbook, she said, well, do I need to know all of that about my ideal client? I'm like, no, nope. what we discovered is that all you need to have, and then we'll take you through this process is what is your purpose? Like your purpose, like, why do you do what you do? Yeah. And then what is your desired transformation for your ideal clients? Like what is the desired outcome for them? Yeah. And then what type of business do you have? Basically three things, right? And just by these three elements, we've cracked the code on, uh, we've produced this 16 part prompt sequence that from these three pulls out of AI, this beautiful document. And, um, wow. so that's what we are now, uh, coaching our clients on so that my wish for every entrepreneur that cares about building an authentic relationship with their audience is that they get their hands on an ideal client handbook that's customized to them. And, um, and that's, that's what we're teaching our clients right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll say like one of like my favorite memories from being inside the powerhouse mastermind is those, you know, the, those trainings that we had and gosh, that one time you sat with us and like we were up late we were up so late with that fireside chat and oh, but, you, but that's what you were helping us do was to do this yeah and right. it's yeah. so amazing like I mean yes I it was fun that. being with the girls but like uh, totally. you can get all your time back now <laughs> you exactly. don't have to sit with us and like that's pull it, it out of us anymore I mean time is no longer an excuse, right? Like anytime, I mean, of course we all have moments where the little voice, like, I don't have time for that. And it's like, let's just ask the question, is that true? Right. Cause we want to be right about it. Right. But my, my inner voice wants to be right that I don't have time and you don't understand it. Right. Like, like, is that true? And it's just, especially with AI, it's just not like now I, and I was sharing this on this workshop earlier today. Um, I said, anytime you feel like something feels stressful or overwhelming in your business, just ask yourself, would it be possible that AI can help me with this, right? 
True. Like just, te- I, I like to test, I'm testing it myself all the time now. Like if ever I sit down, I'm like, oh, I really want to uh, refine my outline for my workshop. I need to sit down and take a look at, it's like, or I can work with AI to come up with some ideas, right? <laughs> yes. Or um, now that we have the ideal client handbook, check this out. I've, one of the things that I'm obsessed about right now is taking my customer journey to the next level, right? Cause I'm always thinking about my ideal clients and like, how can I take the entire customer journey to the next level? And so Ken and I sat down and we were talking about using the ideal client handbook. And then he came up with a prompt to create an AI, like basically a focus group. That's like an AI, like a, you know, an AI focus group of three yeah. of my clients and a facilitator. So it's almost like I had this like virtual reality of like this Whoa. facilitator. And so I'm like, okay, facilitator, ask them about this, right? Ask them, how do they find out about me? Ask them, you know, if they could wish for anything in a mastermind, what would it be? Ask them what they've loved and hated about past group programs and masterminds they've been in, right? Ask, like, I'm just like, <laughs> that, I mean, I got so much information in like 20 minutes that if I booked calls with like, it, which I, I, I've done this before and I will do it again. I, I, I'm not saying don't still ask actual human beings these questions but imagine if you you've got some deep insights from ai yeah right yeah and then have it help you with your customer journey or whatever it is that feels heavy right now or whatever it is you're wanting to improve ask yourself can ai help me with this so i believe we no longer have the excuse of time we no. just don't if yeah. we it's and we were talking i know you and i had a conversation about this earlier it's not about making time because you can't like make time it's just about prioritizing your time and, you know, I, I mean, I, I definitely for the longest time had the biggest excuse around exercise. I'm like, oh, I just don't have time. I'm just so busy. I'm tired. Right. And you lived with someone who could help with that. Just exactly. Saying. exactly. <laughs> so, well, I know myself, I do best when it comes to exercise, if I have accountability, right. So I believe in the power of community. So we just get it done in the morning, like get up earlier, get it done. The hardest part is getting up, but even that has gotten easier because now it's habit and yeah. now I naturally go to bed earlier and that, you know, it's, it's identity for a long time. Like, oh, I'm a night person. Right. So that just won't work for me. It's like, oh, yeah. is that true? Yeah. Anyway, I can go on. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. And like what I always tell my clients is time is the only non-renewable resource. We always think it's money. Like I don't have enough money to invest in my business, but you don't have time to do it yourself. Yes, exactly. That's right. You know, everyone has the same amount of time, 24 hours a day. Money is a renewable resource, contrary to whatever you might be thinking right now, right? Mm-hmm. We can go out and generate money, whether it's we get a job, whether we sign more clients, you or you cash out your 401k, like you can have access to some kind of money right now if you wanted to. So true. It's so true. And I, I think people get frustrated. Like I'm there's I can just sense somebody's triggered right now hearing that. Yeah. So that's just take a deep breath because would you rather be right about that or would you rather be open to another solution, right? Because there have been times when I want to be right about that, especially because I'm someone who continuously invests in myself and my business and team members and systems and ad agencies and whatnot. And so, um, so I'd rather believe one of my mantras is there is always a way, right? There is always a way. I might not know the way right away, but I always want to be in that belief system of like, there's always a way if I, what if I sat down and brainstormed some ideas or use chat GPT to brainstorm some ideas with me, right? Right. And or reach out to someone who I see, like someone I love, respect and admire and brainstorm with them. You know, like I could get on a call with you, Kylie, and do a jam session. I'm like, you know, I really want to achieve this goal or whatever it is, or generate some more revenue. Can you, can we do a jam session to come up with some ideas on that? And early on when I really needed it, I, my, my, coaching business wasn't taking off as quickly as I wanted it to. And I needed an income, right? I was, I refused to go back to corporate. I thought, what am I willing to do? I was willing to take on a couple of contracts where I was providing a done for you service. And in my case, that's copywriting and PR and marketing. So I thought, okay, I can do that for the next six months to fill this gap of income. And I think sometimes people are just aren't willing to do what it takes, you know? And I have friends of mine who are, English is their second language. Like I've, I've friends of mine, her English is their second language. They had a hard time getting a visa. They get hit. Like, they're just like, when we hear people who have English as their first language, 
who don't have to fight to work in this country, when we hear them complain about it's hard to make money, they get really upset. And I'm glad they confided that in me. I was like, I'm never going to complain about that, you know? Yeah. Like, imagine trying to do it in another country, in another language, where it's hard to even get permission to work. I was like, that is perspective. That is perspective. And so something Ken and I often talk about is like willing and able, right? What are you willing and able to do to make the result happen? And I think sometimes people are able, but they're not willing mm. or they're willing, but not able, right? And then in that case, we need to figure it out, find a way. But anyway, it's just, don't yeah. get me started. <laughs> right? No, no, I, I love that. And oh my gosh, I just, I, I just love how, you know, like, the person that you are and how you're able to break things down and make things super simple for people. And you're, you're that, you're that willing and able person, but with that heart centered piece, you know, <laughs> it's not like, okay, I'm willing and able, I'm going to bulldoze my way to get things done. It's like, no, I'm willing and able, but I put people first. I put my team first. I put yeah. my client, not first, but you know, like I, I, they are at the forefront, like my audience, like all the things that you've built in your business have been with the audience heart in mind, like your client, your team, like everything that you do is so heart centered. And I think that's why I loved you. Like when we first met, like, it's like, oh, oh I let's love you. And cause you're my people, you know? And, yeah. It, yeah. It, thank, thank you for all, just all your kind words. And you know, at, at the end of the day, I just think that like we were saying earlier, this life is so precious. You know, there's something that you want to do. Let's just get out there and do it. Like, let's do it now. There, we don't, you don't know how much time we have to just get it done and make it happen. And, yeah. and there perhaps are, and I, I'm not saying be willing to do all the things, but like, just ask yourself, what am I willing to do? What is in alignment with me? There are things that I'm not willing to do, right? Like, right. like I'm not, I'm not willing to like hustle like I used to, right? I'm not willing to like stay up until Three, unless I'm like passionate and excited about something, but right. like I, I say that because I'm like, oh, I, I did stay up, you know, but usually <laughs> I really value sleep. I value having a really solid morning routine that I now love and yeah. I value time with my family. I love, yeah. uh, you know, going to the kids like performances and sporting events and not feeling like I'm super stressed out and I can't do that. Um, I like having more space in my schedule now. And I realized that that um, I still sometimes work through a mindset around guilt. Like I, I'm working through it, right? Like, oh, I should be working right now versus relaxing or going for a walk or, you know, curling up in bed. And you know what I mean? Like I, but I just, the more I just tune in and say, what does, what does my body need right now? Do I need rest? Okay, I need rest. And if I rest and then come back to this task later, I'll do it better and more joyfully than if I power through right now, like I used to. So- <sighs> Yes. And yeah. Yeah. That's the part. Hopefully those of you who are listening, that's the part I want you guys to take away is one, what does your body need? Like, and it's not just your body body, but it's your, um, I have like a, I love four prong systems. Okay. Like I have four <laughs> archetypes. I have four, but the four different energy types, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Like, yeah. what do you need to do to recharge those things? A lot of times with burnout and when I was doing health coaching, it was all about the physical body and, you know, I'm feeling tired, but when you go back and look at, okay, it's, is it an emotional tiredness? Is my brain tired? Cause I used to work in the, in a refinery and there's a whole control board where I was sitting for 12 hours, but my brain was scanning these points and having to manage all of, you know, temperatures, pressures, flows, all of that. I was more tired at the end of that 12 hour shift than what, if I were walking around outside and wrenching and doing those outside things, so, you know? And so it's like when we're looking at like how we need to conserve our energy, it's really about checking in with those different parts. Like, and for the, um, you know, with that, um, <laughs> the Chachi Claude, whatever <laughs> right <laughs> again that takes a big mental chunk it yeah. takes that mental like, that energy that we could have been spending mentally on like trying to because girl that oh my gosh that that ideal client worksheet 
the bane of my existence as a beginning entrepreneur. Yeah. Oh, it, it would trip me up every time. Like I, I find a new business coach, like, oh, well, here, fill out this thing first. And then we'll talk about your marketing and your message. I'm like, what the hell is keeping me up? Like, this is keeping me up at night. I don't know what's keeping them up at night, but this is <laughs> keeping me up tonight. So, yeah, uh, it's, a pain, it's a pain point. It, it's a it's a pain point we all experience. And even, even if, you know, for those who are seasoned entrepreneurs, like we pivot our business, you know, we evolve who we attract and it's coming back to it again. And, um, and so I've, I've had that pain point, pain point myself. That's why I'm, I'm so excited for people to really like get their hands on their own customized ideal client handbook. Um, right now we have it inside our, our program where we, we walk you through it and then just yeah. sharing with you a little behind the scenes is that we're creating an automation around it so that ultimately it'll be such a quick process of putting in a few inputs, putting it in our production queue, have it run behind the scenes and then being delivered right into your inbox. Um, so we're, we're getting close to that. And, um, I, I'm, I'm so like, I'm so excited to help more people with that piece because then not only will they un deeply understand their ideal client, but they will understand the best communication preferences like of their ideal client. They'll understand, um, their, uh, the best customer journey to take them through Like there's just so much, there's so much depth to this resource and it's customized to yes. you and your ideal client. So Yes. Um, that's why I'm, I, I can't wait to share it with the world. You know, like, I just know it's going to help so many people serve the people they're meant to serve by deeply yeah. understanding them in this way. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I love like, that. Those are all the pieces yeah. and yeah. they're all automated, like my heart and automations. Like I love automating everything. Cause you know, sometimes we, like we can't afford a, co a copywriter at the beginning stages of our business. Yeah. It's and like you said, until you figure all of that stuff out, like you really shouldn't hire a copywriter anyway. And like, just, you know, you can play with the model, like throw things at it and like have it spit things out. And like, no, 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 that's not really it. And then you can, like, you would just keep going back around. Like, okay, well, I'm feeding it. Like I'm a refinery girl, right? I'm feeding it the wrong feed. Yes. And then like, it's coming out with this type of product. My product is off spec. So, aha, yeah. uh -huh, let me, let me try a different feed source so I can get my product on spec. That's right. That's right. Yeah. This one of our clients, uh, she's like garbage in garbage out. I'm like That's right. Right. So it's, yeah, you're with AI, your output is only as good as your input. And, and even these generic prompts, they're not good enough. Like it's going to make everybody sound the same because everyone's using the same prompts. That's why we go way, 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 way deeper. Right. It's like, yes. If you really want to leverage this to amplify your unique, beautiful, authentic voice and understand your ideal client that you love, then this is it, right? Like we, we can definitely help you with that and get so clear on these elements and have these resources forever. So um, yeah, we're, we're excited to be currently supporting our, our clients with it right now, but the, the automation is coming soon. And I, I know it's just going to be like affordable and easy to process and, um, yeah, it just it, it just really excites me. So, yeah, I know. Like, just right having ChatGPT plus your authentic messaging recipes. Yeah, so good. No so more, good. no more writer's block ever again. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah. there's so many of us in the at the beginning stages of our business. Like, I don't know what to write. I don't know what to put on social media. I don't know what to do online. It's like, where I don't even, you know, what's another funny one. It's like, I don't know what to call myself. Like, for the, okay. Oh yeah. First few years of my business, I kept changing my title. Like, am I like, cause at first I was like, do I want to do life coaching or business? Like I was kind of playing around with what kind of coaching or consulting. I was like, wait, am I a success mentor or am I a marketing expert or am I? So <laughs> back in the day, I, I kept updating it on my Facebook and then a friend of mine, she texts me one day. She's like, Amy, stop updating your, because it notified her. I, I don't know if it still does this now, but it was like notifying all my friends every time I changed it. I was like, oh no, so <laughs> embarrassed. I was like, wait, you can see that. She's like, every time you change it, I'm notified. I'm like, oh no, this is terrible. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I can help you even like figure yourself out, you know, like yeah. how do you want, what do you want to be known for? Right. Like. If I, if I wanted to like think about that and just like 
I mean, my old way of being would be to overthink it and change it a million times. Now I can use AI and just share with it. What is your purpose? Why you do what you do? And like, what is your desired transformation for your ideal client? And then have a conversation with, I mean, if you can use Claude, use Claude. I know Claude's not available everywhere, uh, but it recently was um, expanded to like over 90, 96 countries. Still not available in Canada, but maybe by the time this is out, it might be. But, but my point is, whether it's ChatGPT or Claude, just insert those two elements and have a conversation with it and yeah. see what it responds to you. To say, based on this, what would you say is my title? What would you say is my, um, uh, like, what should I include in my messaging, right? Like, just ask it questions. It'll tell you. It'll give you, it'll give it your best shot. Not that you need to agree with everything it says. I mean, if you don't yeah. like it, give it feedback. You know, that's what it's there for. So. Love it. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah oh, it's good. Man, I, I, I'm excited. So one, you should get yourself on Amy's email list because she's, you know, on the bottom of your emails, I love how you're sending out those prompts too. Yeah. Like, try this. If you just have the regular Chad GPT or Chachi. No? Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. We nicknamed it Chachi early on. <laughs> We're like, it's, yeah, I did a voice transcription and it, it wrote Chachi instead of Chad GPT. And I was like, I'm just going to call it Chachi from now on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, right. You can just use the prompts that Amy has and just try it out and see if it works. But like she said, um, to, it all it depends on what you put in it, right? Yes. Her prompts are pretty robust. I love them, you know, and it, it has voice. It has like, just get on her email list one. And um, what you said, doors are opening for your authentic yes. marketing, right? Yeah, we're doing our, our last uh, cohort of authentic marketing with AI. It's a, it's a four week program. We do these done with you workshops. And um, so it's, it's where we, we help you train AI on your authentic voice, like how it train it so that it can write copy and content and communication for you in your voice. And now we've added in how you can also have your ideal client handbook created. So you can have this really deep dive handbook analysis of your ideal client that you can then feed it back into into AI, ChatGPT or Claude. And um, I mean, I, I was having it come up with um, a video sales letter for me and a landing page wow. um, copy. And I mean, I was I was blown away because I I'm very picky when it comes to copywriting, and so I'm I, even though I've been using it all year, I still go like, is it gonna do? Is it gonna make it salesy and pitchy, or is it gonna actually be in my voice? And I was blown away because of what I put into it, right? So yeah, um, so yeah, we're, we've included the ideal client handbook. Um, and, uh, and then the, the one thing I didn't mention is we also have a, a resource called super copywriter that we're including where once you have your, your unique voice and your ideal client handbook, and then we give you super copywriter and then you upload all of it into bot or chat GPT. And then it'll actually not just write copy for you. It'll come up with the top engaging and relevant themes for your ideal client right now. Wow. And then you just make selections. Like it, it, it gives you basically a multiple choice and you make selections and then it writes this beautiful copy for you. And you're like, I can't even believe that you just did that. And it's really good copy. I'm, 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 I'm very picky. And I'm like, dang, this is good copy. And it's, it's benefiting me too. Cause when I, when I prompt it and it creates it, I do it every morning. It's part of my morning ritual right now. After I work out, I come home, I have some coffee and I, I go in and I, I use these tools myself every single day. And I'm like, dang, this is getting some good advice. <laughs> so then I always <laughs> play with the prompts and it's just so fun. It, I mean, so yes, our, our doors are open for our, our final, uh, at least live version of Authentic Marketing with AI um, for four weeks. And uh, we're going to wrap this one up for this year. We're really excited to support people with it. Yeah. And I love that this is like your last cohort for the year because, right, your planning team has, anyway, bonus, bonus tip, right? When we were in Powerhouse Mastermind, you told us to plan our lives or plan our business around our lives, right? You plot out your life on your annual calendar, and then you plan your launches around your, your life events and not the other way around. Yes. Otherwise you're going to be doing the work and feel resentful, which I have been there and it's not, it's not fun to do that. And yeah. so that's why we're like, let's do, let's do one more um, cohort of this. This will be our 10th one this year. And, um, and then we'll, we'll see next year. Like, we'll you know, we'll, we'll have the, you know, the evergreen version of this, but 
because we're about to launch this product and we've got some other exciting things in the works for 2024, yeah. um, we're not sure if we'll do any more live versions of this. So we're just yeah. at least letting people know that this is the last time we're like for sure doing it live this year. And we may or may not do another live version of it next year just because of what we're evolving right now. So yeah. And you know, like that's what it is, right? We launch and then if when it's good, turn it evergreen. Like so yeah. let it be easy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Be easy. Oh. I, I don't, you know, I, I know where we might be making light of this. I know there are times that that business can feel hard, you know, and it it's not like everything's all, you know, perfect all the time in my, my world. It's not. Um, I, I definitely stretch myself and I've, you know, I, I, I'm a big risk taker. You know, there are times that I've taken risks and fallen flat on my face and had these like, oh crap moments. How am I going to fix this? Um, but I wouldn't change what I'm doing. You know, like I love, I love my team. I love what I do every day. And um, it, to me, it's like character building, right? So when things don't work out, it's like, okay, who, who am I going to be in this moment? Am I going to have a pity party for the next six months about something that didn't work or maybe give myself like five minutes <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and then say, okay, this happened. What can I do? Right. How can I learn from this? How can I be innovative? How can I be creative? Who can I reach out to? What can I shift? What can I learn? There might be something from this falling flat on my face thing that happened where I would not have innovated a solution that is repeatable had this not happened. And so I really continue to work on my mindset and recognize any problem or pain point or challenge or failure that I've faced. I'm not alone there, you know, like I surround myself with incredibly um, inspiring entrepreneurs. And, and if ever I go through something, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this happened. Like, Oh yeah. I remember when that happened to me too, about five years ago or whatever, you know, like, like, okay, you're going to be fine, right? It's good to have people right. around you. You're going to be like, who almost like, it's okay. Shh, you know, pet me a little bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amy, it's going to be fine. I'm like, is it? Okay. Yeah. Like, yep. Don't worry. Like I've been there. This is what happened. First of all, I feel you. And in the moment it can feel like the most catastrophic thing in the world, but here's, here's some things you can do now to shift things. And I learn, like i I love that anytime I, I connect with someone, like I, I've got incredible colleagues and mentors around me all the time. And it's like, I've never had a time where I, I, I've like asked for support, gotten support and gotten through the thing that one of the best pieces of advice I've got was like, Amy, this is just a blip in time, right? It can feel like the whole world is crumbling. It's just a blip in time, like in the, in the big scheme of things, right? And I don't say it to diminish my feelings, but what they don't want me to do is to let that take me down, right? And that's there's a distinction there. I read this article really quick. I'll share with you the importance of rec recognizing the difference between saying I am and I feel, right? Mm. So for a while, I was feeling stressed, right? So I found myself, my constant thought is I am stressed. I am stressed. I am stressed. I am anxious. I am stressed. And, and then I realized that by using I am, I was making it my identity. Yeah. Right. Versus yeah. I feel stressed. If I say I feel stressed, then it's a feeling that's separate from my identity. And when I was reading this article, it's like psychology, you know, psychological, it said the problem with that is it, it, you start to have it really become your identity, whatever you're saying after I am, that's negative yeah. and it can become psychological permanence. And when I read that phrase, psychological permanence, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I'm not going to become stress as my identity. This yes. does not work for me. And so I started reframing in my brain, like, okay, I feel stressed. I'm committed to finding a solution. I feel anxious. I am committed to reaching out and asking for support, right? Like I feel this, but I am this. I, I feel this, but I'm, I'm amazing. I'm a wonderful person. I feel this way, which doesn't feel very good, right? Like to yeah. just to recognize that. So I just want to share because I'm sharing that with everybody I care about right now, because I'm like, dude, don't get caught up in that because you'll become a jaded old person and that's not good. So oh. There's my, yeah. <laughs> my wisdom for you today. <laughs> yeah. And also like feelings change, right? Um, if you ever been in love with like, unless you're with your high school sweetheart today, <laughs> feelings change. <laughs> True. Yes. <laughs> so I think it also like when you separate it from your identity, it's like, oh yeah, feelings fade. And so this feeling can disappear. It can go away. Yes. Just like float away like a little bu bubble that you pop and it's gone. Yes. And it's and here's what's wild to me, Kelly. Like it's 
it's wild how you can feel a feeling and then within an hour it's completely gone right like it's wild how in a given day you can have like like a a feeling of anger or frustration or sadness and then later you're like laughing about something and I'm like it's not wild how in a day you can feel like these extreme of emotions I don't know maybe I'm just outing myself (laughs) emotional spectrum (laughs) but when that happens I'm on the spectrum I was really like feeling annoyed earlier I was really feeling stressed I was feeling now I feel like I can take on the world. Like I can do it right? Like, right? Or, or vice versa in the morning. Like it's, yeah. but it's important to recognize the feeling is going to pass unless you're gripping onto it. Cause you want to be an angry, resentful, pissed off person, right? Like if you want to hold on to it, but do you want to be right about that? Or do you want to just let it go? <laughs> as the song says. So. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I love how on our, our calls, right. We would, we would have dance breaks in between. It's like, let's get this energy up. Like, I feel you guys slipping. It's the afternoon. Like, let's get this energy up. And, you know, just like so many different ways to shift your energy, shift your mindset. And just, oh my yes. gosh. Yeah. yeah. Just think about what makes you feel good. What makes you happy. Um, yeah. Like, like, even with this like energy driver thing, you could think about like yeah. happiness. Like, what, what are the things that bring you joy? Right. Like, listening to music, dancing, singing, um, going out and being in nature and having a little, you know, coffee, like what, whatever it is, these little joys, like make sure you insert them into your life. Like I I found that when I, it's when I get away from that, that I can go into that slip into like burnout land. Right. Like, I was like, I can, I can feel when my beingness is going into depletion. And it's usually when I've disconnected from my vision I've disconnected from my, my own self, I've made everything and everyone else a priority and put myself last. And so a question I like to ask myself when I slip back into an old way of being is like, okay, if I were someone I deeply loved and cared about, how would I treat me right now? Like if it was a different, like it was someone I deeply cared about, how would I treat them right now? And I I would say, well, I would want to check in with them. How are they feeling? How's their day going? You know, what's happening in their life? Okay. So have I checked in with myself on that? Mm-hmm. So I'll ask myself those questions. Like, how am I feeling? Oh, I'm feeling a little tired, you know, like uh, feeling a little low energy. Um, you know, what's happening? Oh, I've had a lot on my plate and yeah. feeling stressed, whatever. Like, how would I treat a friend? I'd say, well, can you take a little time, right? Now? Like, can you take the rest of the day off? Or at least like, yeah. what do you have coming up the next few days? I would suggest that they take some time to rejuvenate. So I've been like, what if I did that for my, if I truly cared about myself, that's how I would treat myself. Yeah. Right. And if this other person was like, yeah, but I'm too busy. What would I say to them? I'd say, okay, are you really, or are you going to burn yourself out and then get sick and then really not have time because now you're like in bed. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just kind of like coach myself through it. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to go take a nap now. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) like yes naps and we're entrepreneurs we can make our own time like if you want to take a nap like i, I am i am gonna take a nap this you afternoon. know what i know i used to not be a nap taker i will tell you a good nap is really quite lovely i think that even a short nap like something just like curl up and just like let the world just just like be with yourself for 15 minutes even if you don't fully sleep just like right. curl up get a blanket. Like, I think we all just need that sometimes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that inner child in us, like, like, you know, like if kids who have tantrums need naps, like if we're feeling ourselves getting stressed, like, Hey, maybe it's time for a nap. We, we, I think we have it right when we're little, you know, cause we can express and like, I'm tired. Right. It's like right. Take no nap, filters. Right? right. Right. Exactly. And so now it's like, we still need a nap. We still need hugs. We still need a nap. Like we still need that. And I think we, we don't always recognize it, but we need sleep. We need rest. We need good nutrition. We need to take care of like all the things, all the things. So things. Oh man. I'm sure we could talk for days and days on burnout and just, um, but you know, like, you know, having someone to walk you through like this is a seven-figure entrepreneur who has figured out how to do life and business without burning herself out yes like 
like you said, like you, you fallen on your face a couple of times, but like the tips that you gave today for the people to pick themselves back up and, you know, find their step again, it's huge. And even with this thing that you, you and Ken have built with the AI and chat GPT and having that authentic marketing piece, like that is, you know, like so many of the people that you've worked with on their messaging, like that's one of the biggest things that trips us up. And man, anyway, if you're, if you have, you know, messaging issues, like Amy is your person, like she is your person, especially if you're a heart-centered entrepreneur who, you, you know, you don't care about like, not that you don't care about making more money because, but if that's not like your driver, but like connecting with your audience, connecting with your clients, really calling more heart-centered clients into your world, okay, Amy is your person and don't sit on it, okay? Because uh, you should really get into that authentic marketing thing because Amy is the bee's knees when it comes to authentic messaging and marketing and um, and Ken and like, because I, I have been to um, like one of your workshops, like your past workshops and just like from a systems point of view, like I don't know what it looks like now, but like with all of the the bells and whistles that you have on that thing, I'm like, this is like genius. It's super genius. So just thank you guys for creating it. And, you know, like, thank you for Ken having a pivot. Cause honestly, right. Probably wouldn't have this tool today if Ken didn't have to go to a, through that pivot. Yeah. You know, we can be, uh, I've said before, we can be thankful for our thorns, you know, like, Wherever you are today, if you're sitting in a thorny patch and life is hard and, you know, like you can get out of that and like th life doesn't have to be hard. So, you know, working with Amy, working with me to get some of that hard stuff taken out, like, man, like, anyway, just thank you again, Amy, for being here today and sharing your heart and your message with the audience and just how, how you're living life as a seven figure entrepreneur without losing yourself, without, you know, giving into the hustle and the grind and loving your life while still scaling your business. And it's not that you don't set goals and it's not like, like you're like, Oh, like the, no, like you're still an, a high achiever, but without burning yourself out. Yeah. It's like, sometimes what I'll do Kylie is I'll, I'll look at like, well, I've done this myself and I've had my clients do this, like write a letter to yourself from your 93 year old self, Yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. and every once in a while, I'll like just tune into her. I'm like, who's that old wise Amy? You know, what does she want to say to me today? And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so if you want to like, just have a fun exercise, whether you write it down or just like tune in. And it's always like, you just got this like, you know, white gray hair and she's just like this old cool lady. <laughs> Right. Yes. Because and I'm always gonna be cool no matter I'm gonna be cool. I'm sure I'll be cool, right? Like yes. <laughs> and like she always has this like, oh Amy. <laughs> you know, like just don't don't stress. You know, like because I usually I'll call on her when I'm feeling a little like, oh my god, I'm like overthinking something, you know, exaggerating the drama of whatever yeah. thing I right? the magnitude of the just, yeah, like yeah. whatever it is that's in front of me. And 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 uh and even if it feels big right now, she's like, Oh Amy. And she's very loving, but she's like you're going to be fine. I know it feels big right now. I know it feels scary and uncomfortable. Um, and you're, you're going to get through this and you're going to learn through this. So I, it's just a very like nurturing yeah, yeah. kind of mothering kind of a, a, a vibe. It sounds like my grandma. Right? Yeah, totally. It just has that <laughs> grandma vibe. And, and, and it's very, because she's older and wiser and she's lived a lot longer and, and she gets it. And and she can see, she can look back at my full life and and notice my patterns and notice all the things. And, and she's just like, she's cool. You know, she's like, she's, yeah. she's like, and she, oh, and she also likes to tell me like, just look at how good you have, no matter what, like, even if I wasn't where I am now. Right. And I'm always yeah. stretching myself and I still have challenges. Of course, like we all have challenges, but she's always like, oh girl, like, <laughs> if I want to talk about challenges talk about you know my joints right now and talk about like that you know like 
things that happen when you're in your nineties, <laughs> right? Just like, girl, you know, if I were your age, like go, go for, you know, go outside, go skip around the, the block. You know, like, right. Just, yeah. Go work yeah. out. Cause I can't. <laughs> saying I'm young, I, like I'm still like young enough. You know what I mean? Right. Like yes. she's like, she still sees me as like this kid. Right. So she's like, go out there, go do fun things, spend time with your family. Like, don't overthink it. You're going to, you're going to do great on your workshop tomorrow. Like, don't like, you know what I mean? Like your launch, your launch. Okay. Calm down. You know? And so she's yes. like, okay. <laughs> old wise Amy, you know, and it, it just makes me laugh and bring light to it. And, yeah. and then I realized that whatever problem I think I'm facing, it's exaggerated in my head. And unless it's a real thing, like losing a loved one, you know, or having a loved one or yourself go through a health crisis, like unless it's something that's really actually bigger, then let's not make it bigger than it is. You know, like let's focus on what we're grateful for and what we're working towards, what we're creating. Let's bring joy and fun into it. Yeah, I'm thinking music brings joy to everything, yeah. you know, like when was the last time you really like got lost in music? You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway. Oh my gosh. Good. I'm going to go listen to music after this. That's what I'm yeah. Doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, all the things like where can they find you? Where can they, you know, connect with you online and how can they get access to all of your wonderful things? Yes. So it's pretty easy. Just everything's under my name. So if you like amyyamada.com is my website. Um, my, my Instagram is Amy Yamada. I mean, if you just, if you just, okay, here's what I'll say. If you Google Amy Yamada, you'll see a lot of me. And then you'll see this other woman named Amy Yamada, who's a famous Japanese author of trashy romance novels. Not oh. <laughs> I know, but but my website is under my name. So you'll see both of us. Please don't confuse us. I'm sure she's, <laughs> sure she's lovely. Um, I'm sure she's lovely, but um, different, different Amy Mata. So yeah, it, I'm pretty, pretty easy to find. If you just, um, yeah, go on and find me on Instagram, go on DM me. That's totally cool. Um, I'm not always super fast in replying because I have my boundaries, but I do, you know, you know, a few times a week, whatever, check in and see if there's some lingering yeah. messages. Um, yeah. And I, I do, ho I love hosting workshops, you know, so if it's something where you're like, you know, let me just get a, a better feel for this, then I, I host many a workshop <laughs> that are free. And um, so you can come to a workshop or, or if you're already feeling the vibe, then, uh, you know, just depending on the timing of tuning in, then we do have one more cohort of authentic marketing with AI, where we're going to provide all these uh, trainings and resources and the ideal client handbook and super copywriter so that you'll be set so you can save time in your life and focus more of it on what you actually want to do versus sitting yes. in front of the laptop all the time yes yeah stop going around the mountain and like yeah yeah just outsource yeah. the thing get Definitely. it out of your hair and be yeah. done with it yeah and like I already sent somebody's like how much like people always always how much is it we we really want to make this an affordable program it's either a thousand dollars paid in full or four monthly payments of 297 um, so we, we just wanted to make it as accessible as possible and, um, we're, we're excited to work with you. So, yay. That's yeah. so accessible. Thank you, Amy. All good. Okay. So oh, well, thank you again for tuning into this episode of Burnt Out Entrepreneur Podcast. Thank you, Amy, for being on the show. Um, I just, I love you and I love connecting with you. Your energy is so good. And just thank you for all the things that you shared with the audience today. and can't wait to to see you more absolutely likewise thank you for having me it's been so did you enjoy this episode want more here are a few ways to go deeper number one discover your burnout archetype you always hear me talking about this on each and every single episode so get ready to crack the code on your personal burnout style take the quiz go to burnedoutarchetypequiz.com and open up your mind to explore new ways on how to manage stress and conquer challenges according to your personality type. Number two, work with me. I will be your personal burnout recovery coach because we're not just talking about change. We're talking about a seismic shift in the way that you conquer your entrepreneurial domain. So strap in and let's embark on a roller coaster ride to reclaim your life and your success. In my coaching program, we're blasting through barriers, including number one, building better boundaries, right? We're going to stop those energy vampires and establish unbreakable boundaries to fortify your work-life equilibrium. Number two, 
Reclaim your energy. Say goodbye to fatigue and hello to a turbo boost of vitality. Discover the secrets to replenishing your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual energy, my specific PEMS framework. And this is more than stress management, okay? We're going to wrestle stress to the ground and make it tap out. Every setback is a setup for an epic comeback. And right, you're going to become a goal-getting machine. We're going to fuse your personal and professional aspirations into a powerhouse of purpose. Say hello to a life that's not just lived, but thrived. Okay, so hold on to your hats. This is not just coaching. It's a revolution of the soul. This entrepreneurial world is not a lonely one when you've got a relentless ally like me in your corner. So it's time to crank up the volume and get ready to hustle with heart. Keep the fire alive. Keep smashing those goals. And don't forget, I'm your partner in this electrifying journey. P.S. Let's flame the faints of connection. Catch up with me on the socials. You'll find my LinkedIn, my Instagram, my Facebook, and a link to my Facebook group for more exclusive content in the show notes. We'll see you there.